In this video, we are going to take a look at the PC Engine, we're going to do an unboxing, a teardown, and then we're going to talk a little bit about whether or not this is going to get a mod, and what that's going to look like. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. Alright guys, so my package arrived just about a few days ago. This is the PC Engine I had imported directly from Japan. And as you can see, it's a, it's a very simple design in terms of the packaging. We're not going to spend too much time looking at it, just because it is fairly basic. Now obviously we've got the graphic on the front that does display the PC Engine mini console, and then towards the back we are also going to notice that it does display all of the games. Now this console actually comes with 58 games loaded up and we're going to have access to 34 titles that are going to be on the Japanese side of the PC Engine software and we're going to have an additional 24 games that you'll be able to access through the Turbo Graphics interface. Now keep in mind that some of the games are actually duplicates. In some cases we actually have both the North American and the Japanese versions of the same game. That being said, this console does come with the most amount of games pre-installed out of any of the classic systems. Now I'm not going to go off and list off all 58 games, I will leave a link below for you guys to access if it's something that you want to take a peek at. I will touch on a couple of them, but we're just going to go ahead and open this thing up. So getting this thing out of the box, the first thing that we're going to notice is that it does come with a user manual. Now because this is an import from Japan and we are talking specifically about the PC Engine, so it doesn't really do me any good, I can't read Japanese, but regardless it is still included. The next thing that's included is a micro USB cable, and this is actually a fairly high quality cable, it does feel pretty good. But keep in mind it does not come with the power brick, so you are either going to need to connect this into some sort of a USB hub, or you're going to need to bring in a power brick from something else. Now it doesn't draw a lot of power, so you should be able to find something in your house. Any of your other mini console power bricks should do the trick. Next we're going to go ahead and take a look at the controller, and I actually really like the way it feels. It, uh, it feels incredibly high quality, it, it feels good in your hands, the buttons feel really good. Now I do want to mention that the D-pad does feel a little bit stiff, but that's just my personal opinion on it. Uh, it does feel like uh, it probably needs to be broken in a little bit. Now you're going to notice the form factor is identical to an original PC Engine controller. Now I don't actually have an original PC Engine uh, at home, so I can't really show you guys a uh, side-by-side -side comparison, um, but I will throw one up on screen here. They are identical. Now this specific model doesn't come with the turbo switches, which kind of sucks, but at the same time, it's not that big of a deal. Now I do believe that the TurboGrafx-16, when that is released, which I'm expecting to receive as well, I believe that console does come with the turbo switches, but I'm not 100% sure on that, and if one of you guys know, please correct me in the comment section below. Now moving on, this thing looks incredible. We've got the PC Engine here. Now the interesting thing here is that they do classify this as a mini system, but in reality it's not actually that much smaller than the original PC Engine console. I, I would say this is really only about 20% smaller, and I really think that they probably could have just made it the same size, and possibly given us a hue port as well to potentially actually play original hardware. I think that would have been amazing but it would have increased the price a little bit, and I think what they were trying to go for is the plug-and-play type of console that we've seen from Nintendo, Sony, and from Sega. Taking a look at the front of the unit, we've actually got two USB ports. Now this is obviously different than the original console. The original console only had a single controller port. This allows for two USB devices to be plugged into it. Next to that we actually have our on off switch and the uh, the interesting thing about this is that when you do place it into the on position it actually puts out the little lock that would prevent the hue game from coming out so nice attention to detail I do love that quite a bit. The other changes that they've made with the mini console is that uh, if you take a look on the top here uh, you've got arrows that kind of point out towards your AC adapter and your antenna switch. Now obviously if you take a look on the sides we don't have anything uh, there, no inputs, no outputs, nothing like that. Uh, what they've actually done is they moved everything to the back of the console and as you can see we've actually got an extension bus cover port that's here and on the original console we would have actually had connectors in there, but what they've done is they've moved the HDMI out and your DC in 
to those areas. I mean, when you're actually playing the console or you've got it set up, you're never actually gonna have the extension port plug in there, but it is nice to have, and it is kind of cool that they did include it. Other than that, the uh, the mini console looks and feels really good. Like this is not cheap plastic. This is a very high quality build. And you can tell that just by how sturdy it feels in your hands. And then finally, the last thing that we're gonna have in the box is a standard HDMI cable. Now, most people have hundreds of these laying around at this point, but it is nice that they do include it as well. Now I did mention the controller does feel really good and I do gotta give them props. I'm really impressed with the way that it feels, and I think this is really important. If you don't get the controller right, you're gonna throw off the gaming experience completely, so I do appreciate that they've done this well. Now cracking this thing open, we're just gonna go ahead and take a look at what we have inside in terms of our specs. Uh, so it's just really simple to take this thing apart. There are four Phillips screws right on the bottom of it. We're gonna go ahead and remove those. Once we separate the top and the bottom case, you're actually going to notice that the uh, PCB is screwed into the bottom portion of the case with just four Phillips screws, which are actually screwed through a heat shield. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those four screws and we're gonna take a peek at the actual board itself. So the heat shield is barely on there. It doesn't take any work to get off. You can literally pop it off. And as you can see, there is a little bit of an adhesion heat dissipating sticker in between the processor and that heat shield. Now, in terms of the actual specs on here, I was really surprised to see that the uh, system on a chip or the CPU that's used here is the exact same CPU as what was used in the Sega Genesis Mini. So we are using the Zuki Z7213 SOC. And uh, what that actually tells us is that this is going to be a fairly simple mod because we've already modded the Sega Genesis. So I would imagine that both hacking groups, both Hackchi as well as Mod My Classic are working towards a mod for this. And I'd imagine that that's gonna come down the pipeline pretty quickly. In terms of memory, everything's the same. We've got 256 megabytes of RAM, but our storage is actually substantially uh, increased. On the Genesis Mini, we had about 512 megabytes of flash memory, whereas on this, we've actually got four gigs of internal memory. And the reason why it's so much higher is because this console comes with some of the PC Engine CD games or the TurboGrafx CD games. And those games are actually quite large, in some cases over 300 megabytes. So in order to get this number of games, onto the console, just stock the way it is, they did need to have substantially more than 512 megabytes. But that's more or less it in terms of the specs and things like that. We're gonna go ahead and reassemble this thing and get it plugged in. So we're gonna go ahead and switch over to the console now. Okay, so the first thing that we are actually prompted to is to select our language. And obviously for this, we are going to go ahead and select English. And now it's gonna take us directly into our game menu. And I do gotta say, this is actually probably the nicest stock screen that we've had for any of the mini consoles. We've got an animated background where we've got the little miniature uh, PC Engine dudes walking around and dancing and doing some weird stuff. Uh, so that's actually pretty cool. And then in terms of our game selection, we've actually got almost like a jewel case style uh, display and then obviously the cover art of those games. And it will indicate to you as well the number of players uh, just down below. So you can see that this is a single player game. And then as you go on, for example, Fantasy Zone is a two player game. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is jump over to our options and the way that we access that is just pressing down on the D-pad. And what that's going to do is get us into our settings. We're gonna go ahead and select that. And uh, these are what we've actually got access to in terms of our stock settings. So we've got access to our user manual and then of course we can change the language again. And then in terms of display settings, it actually gives you a bunch of different options. So right now you've got a three by four aspect ratio and then you've got a full screen aspect ratio. And then of course we've got a, I believe this is a pixel perfect aspect ratio, widescreen. And then we have access to the core graphics style display. Now, now this is a much smaller screen. Some people will like that. I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. And then of course as well, if you press the run button, you can actually get a CRT filter set up on that as well. I'm probably not gonna keep it on, but if you are a fan of scanline filters, then you actually have access to do that here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take mine off and we're gonna jump back now. 
The next thing that we have access to is to change out the wallpaper. Now we only have three or four options. We've got the stock one that's currently right on the console, right out of the gate. And then we've got a couple of other options here. And the last thing I'm gonna mention here before we actually go back is that if you press again, the run button on the controller, you have access to turn on or off a screensaver. So if you look in the top right hand corner of the wallpaper that's on display, if I press the run button, we've got our wallpaper logo that disappears. And then if we press it again, the wallpaper icon is going to come back. So now we're gonna go ahead and jump back. And then of course we also have access to our menu design. So if you're running this on the PC Engine front end, if you press the menu design button, you're actually going to have access to both the PC Engine design as well as the PC Engine core graphics design. Now it's pretty much just inverting it. This is gonna be kind of like a grayscale, whereas the core graphics is gonna be more of like your dark mode on YouTube or your dark mode uh, for different applications. So it's actually gonna be more of like a dark gray and black kind of color scheme. I actually prefer that. So that's what I'm gonna change mine to. And then additionally, we also have the option to get rid of those little dancing PC Engine guys. Uh, and the way that we do that again is just pressing the run button. So you can see the little PC Engine guy in the top right hand corner of the console has disappeared. But if I press it again, he will come back. Uh, but I'm gonna actually take him off to kind of see what that looks like without all the distracting guys walking around in the background. We're gonna return to our menu. And then the last few things that we have here are the credits and we've got the restore factory settings. So if we go back to our menu, you can see that I don't have any of those guys walking around anymore. And I just have the, uh, the core graphics artwork. As I mentioned, we have a lot of games on here and some of them are going to be uh, the English version or the Japanese version of the same game, but we do have access to quite a few really awesome games on here. Bonk's Adventures on here, and then we've also got Super Darius, we've got Splatterhouse. Now, one of the really cool things, because this is a Japanese imported unit, and this is the PC Engine, this is actually the uncensored game. And I don't think many people have talked about that, but if you purchase the TurboGrafx-16, you're going to get the censored Splatterhouse, which kind of sucks if you want the original game that's uncensored you do have to purchase the pc engine we've got superstar soldier which is a really good game and then we have ghouls and ghosts which is fantastic this actually plays really well on this console as well and then we also have a ton of other games now one of the cool features that this mini console does that none of the other ones do is that it gives you an animation when you're loading the game so as you can see in the bottom right hand corner of this artwork, you can see that it's a hue card. If I go ahead and run this, we're actually gonna get the animation of the hue card going into the console. It's actually pretty cool. So I will show that real quick. And there you go, it looks really cool. Now I'm gonna show you guys what they do as well when you're dealing with some of the PC Engine CD games. Uh, they've got an animation for that and it looks fantastic. So we're gonna go ahead and exit out of this. And the way that you do that is you press start and select on the controller, or I guess your select and run button. You have the option to either save a save state, load your save state, or you can uh, resume your game or return to your menu. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump back into our menu. And I'm gonna show you guys really quickly what it's gonna look like if you were to run a PC Engine CD game. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at Dracula X here. Now I absolutely love that. You guys saw the uh, CD accessory pop up and you could see the disc spinning and then it loads the game. It's just a cool little feature that they've included and I'm sure you guys will absolutely love that. So we're gonna go on back to our main menu and uh, I'm gonna just show you guys one last thing here. As I mentioned, you have access to both the PC Engine front end and the TurboGrafx-16 front end. And the way that we do that is we just go over to Select Console. So if we go ahead and accept the Select Console button, we've almost got what looks like our TV turning off and then our TV turning back on, now running on the TurboGrafx-16 front end. And we've got access to all of our games here. And of course we can go in and change things up uh, in our settings just the same and they'll kind of carry over from our previous version. But this is fantastic. As you can see, we've got Bomberman 93, we've got New Adventure Island, uh, we've got Air Zonk, we've got uh, Bonk's Adventure, we've got uh, Space Harrier, we've got a ton of other really awesome games. But again, I'm not gonna go through all of them because I'm sure you guys have already seen that. Now in terms of the 
actual modding of this console. As I mentioned, it's using a lot of the same hardware that we would have seen on the Sega Genesis Mini. And what that means is because we've already got Hack Chief for Sega Genesis and we've got Project Lunar, it's not going to be very difficult to get this thing modded. Now I can confirm that Mod My Classic is already in development on a mod for this. Uh, I don't know very much information about it. Uh, nothing's really been uh, provided to me in terms of that other than that they are working on it. And I'm not 100% sure what's going on Hakshi side. I haven't really discussed anything with any of the developers over there, but I would imagine that they are also working towards this, seeing as how this should be a fairly straightforward mod and we should get access to it. Now, something that you're going to want to consider is that the hardware itself isn't the most powerful out of any of the mini systems. We still have our PlayStation Classic, which is going to outperform this. But if you wanna play games like Super Nintendo, Nintendo, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Sega Genesis, even PlayStation 1 games, they should all run on this. And because the controller is not proprietary, it's just a simple USB plug-in, we should be able to get access to uh, any of the other controllers that we would have used on any of the other mods. So that's pretty exciting. And what I would suggest is definitely subscribe to the channel if and when we've got some mods for the PC Engine or TurboGrafx-16. Once they come out, I'm going to be covering those things. I'm gonna work closely with the developers so that way I can get uh, tutorial videos and teaser videos out to you guys uh, as soon as we've got stuff that's available for beta or for public release. So definitely consider subscribing if that is something you're interested in. But uh, that's pretty much all I've got for you guys in this video. Now, the only other thing that I can think to mention and this has not been confirmed, but it is suspected that the processor is underclocked just like the Sega Genesis one was. So what that's going to mean is that we may need to do an overclocking mod in order to improve performance. I know uh, Mad Little Pixel had put out a video and he was showing that there was some shimmering in certain games and that could simply be solved by increasing the clock speed on that processor, assuming it's underclocked. Uh, we know that these games run perfectly fine on the Sega Genesis Mini, so they should, in theory, run perfectly fine on here. The shimmering really isn't that big of a deal, but if you are looking for a better emulation experience, that may be something that has to happen. But other than that, that's all I've got for you guys. Please consider subscribing to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and let me know in the comment section below if you already got one of the PC engines or if you've got the TurboGrafx-16 pre-ordered. Let me know if you're excited for the mod or if you're gonna leave your stock. I'd love to hear from you guys. But thank you so very much for watching and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.